Hello and welcome to Express Video relevant for ACCA paper P2. Please remember to download our Express Notes from our website www.dexpgroup.com. This video will cover IS 1638 23 related to borrowing costs and IS 36 impairment of assets. IS 16 under the scope of these assets we will include property plant and equipment. Um, tangible ones, and you will exclude investment property. The issues that we'll take into consideration are the initial valuation, right of period, amortization, depreciation, impairments, revaluations, enhancements, and profit or loss on disposal. Initial recognition and classification for property, plant, and equipment should start when we have control of the asset that will bring us future economic benefits not necessarily when we actually bought the asset this will allow us to recognize in the statement of financial position list assets under a finance list initial valuation will include all directly attributable costs into bringing the asset to its intended location for its intended purpose and this will include items like site preparation, professional fees, delivery charges, recoverable import duties, and attributable borrowing costs, as we will as we will see in a second. It will always always exclude training costs uh, for staff in a, in order to be able to use the asset and any abnormal cost of installation. Right of period is over the useful life of the asset. And depreciation will be charged in order to match the income strip generation that we actually get it from the asset. Uh, we are not showing the asset at market side and we do not set aside, set aside money to just buy a replacement asset. Impairments. Under IS 36, we are not allowed to show any asset in the statement of financial position at the year end at an amount which is actually higher than the recoverable amount. If there is an impairment loss, normally it will be booked in PNL unless the property, plant, and equipment was revalued. And in this case, revaluation should be written off first, and then any excess amount will be charged to PNL. Revaluation is default accounting policy, um, and it's a little bit more complicated than historical cost. But once we decide to revalue an asset, the whole class must be revalued. The revaluation must be kept up to date, and the standard says it should be made with sufficient regularity. We must disclose the details of valuation, which may be done by directors, and we cannot return to historical cost later. Depreciation charges will be higher, and uh, any gains on the disposal will actually be lower, since it will be based on the revalued amount. Any additions or enhancements will actually be capitalized if and only if it will increase the earning capabilities of the uh, asset. Borrowing cost. So finance cost must be added to the initial value of the asset if directly attributable to the acquisition of the asset or construction of the asset. We can use a fair weighted average of general company financing cost and um, over the periods of stoppage, so let's say we start constructed and for a month our workers has gone on strike. Over this month, we are not allowed to capitalize the finance cost, but we have to charge it directly as a finance cost in PNL. Once the asset is ready for use, capitalization of borrowing cost must be stopped and then featured as an expense in a profit or loss account. Key workings on calculation of profit and loss on disposal of property, plant, and equipment use the same approach. What comes into the statement of financial position and what goes out. What comes in are the sales proceed. What goes out is the carrying value of the asset. IS38 is actually dealing with um, intangible asset. Under the scope of the standard, basically, we will include any identifiable non-monetary asset without physical substance, because if the asset is monetary, we will account for it under financial instruments. And this includes also the right to use a tangible asset, so license, for instance, it will be uh, accounted for as under IS 38. Goodwill is another example of intangible asset. One particular um, category of intangible assets is research and development. And um, research 
it will always be expensed in the PL when incurred because there are no probable future economic benefits at this stage deriving from the project. But once the development stage has been reached, then the cost can be capitalized if and only if the following criteria is met. So we have adequate resources to complete the project, we have the ability to complete it, and we have the intention to complete the project. The project is technically, technically feasible. There are probable economic benefits associated with the usage of the asset and the expenditure on the project can be separately recorded. Initial valuation is following, if you want, IS-16, all directly attributable cost. Goodwill, which um, is calculated as a difference between fair value of consideration paid to acquire a subsidiary and uh, the fair value of net assets acquired, um, it will be reflected as an asset in the statement of financial position and not amortized. If the goodwill, on the other hand, is going to be negative on a business combination, it will be immediately recognized in profit and loss. The right of period, so for intangible assets with definite meaning known life, like patents, we will actually amortize it over their useful life. For intangible assets with an indefinite or unknown life, like goodwill, we will never amortize them, but we have to test it annually for impairments, irrespective or not, we would have impairment indicators. An impairment it will be charged to profit and loss unless the asset was previously revalued. But the revaluation for intangible assets, the standard recognizes that uh, it should take place in only rare circumstances because revaluation should be done but reference to an active market. And an active market in IS-38 is actually defined um, is defining a market where basically the items traded in the market are homogeneous. There are willing buyers and seller that can be found at any time and the prices are available to the public. And the problem is that with intangible assets, they are not homogeneous. They are very, very distinct. That's why patents, they don't look one like the other. Even software, um, it's not similar, even though we may have a choice of buying between two accounting softwares, they will do different things. Also, goodwill is pretty unique. It's actually relating on a business combination by business combination. So any additions or enhancement, we will follow the same pattern as prescribed by IS-16, meaning if the um, future economic benefits that can be obtained from using the asset are increased, then the cost can be capitalized. So upgrades, let's say, of a server, memory capacity, and other costs like repair and maintenance will be expensed directly. Profit and loss on disposal of an intangible. What comes into the statement of financial position, remember, and what goes out? What comes in are cash proceeds, what goes out is the carrying value of the asset that is getting derecognized. Again, just a quick, quick reminder on the calculation of the goodwill in a business combination. Always, always, always the difference between fair value of what you pay, consideration transfer, less the fair value of identifiable net assets acquired, meaning capital, share premium account, the reserves at acquisition, any fair value adjustments, and we actually can take our own share. And if we do this, the goodwill will actually be calculated based on proportionate method. We can gross it up if we give the fair value of goodwill to non-controlling interest either. So please refer back to our first video on business combinations. IS-36 deals with uh, impairment of asset, and there is only one thing that the standards, only one rule that you have to remember under this standard, any asset cannot be shown in the statement of financial position at an amount which is actually higher than the recoverable amount. And the recoverable amount is actually the higher of fair valueless cost to sell or value in use. Sometimes the assets will not be able on their own to generate independent cash flows, 
And that's why we actually group them in a cash generating unit. And a cash generating unit will actually be the smallest identifiable group of assets that can generate cash inflows, which are largely independent than the cash inflows from other assets or group of assets. An impairment, basically, if it's uh, determined for a cash generating unit, we will actually calculate the impairment if and only if, first of all, we do have impairment indicators, with the exception of goodwill, which we test it annually for impairments because we do not amortize it. So impairment indicators will actually be internal or external to the business, okay? Decline in market value, obsolescence, or it can be, I don't know, change in the intended use, poor performance or physical damage of the asset. Once we identify one impairment indicator, okay, we have to determine the impaired value. How we can do this? We can look at the value in use or selling price less cost to sell. At the value in use, we will look at the future cash flows over five years, which are generated by the asset or the cash generating units. Uh, we have to use the latest general market risk-free rate and the expected revenue less cost necessarily incurred to generate that revenue. We have to use what we call mutually, mutually compatible assumptions, meaning if I'm using the cash flows, money cash flows, meaning including the expected inflation, they must be discounted at an appropriate money rate, which is actually including expected inflation, not the real rate. Or we can use real cash flow, strip out inflation and a real rate. Foreign currency cash flows should be included in here at the spot rate. Impairment losses on individual assets will be booked directly in um, PNL or if those assets were revalued, we first book it to other comprehensive income and then the access to PNL. Cash generating unit. Once we establish the loss in a cash generating unit, we will allocate it um, first to the physically damaged uh, assets, second to the cash uh, generating unit attributable goodwill. That will be written off to zero. And uh, the excess will be allocated on a pro rata basis to the other assets, but we have to make sure that no asset is actually brought down below its recoverable amount. Any reversal it is possible if and only if the impairment indicators no longer exist. Goodwill can never be impaired because it will be actually repaired by internally generated goodwill and internally generated goodwill can never be recognized in the accounts.